Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about the history of e-commerce, right? Let's talk about this for a little bit. First thing you always have in e-commerce is a shopping cart. Shopping carts are fun. This is a very poor shopping cart, though this is where you're gonna put your items when you're buying it. Now, when you have a situation uh, in the history of, of e-commerce, you had the situation where you had a computer that looked something like this. You had a big old monitor, a giant computer, and then you had a keyboard, right? Like, everybody remembers this in the 90s. So when e-commerce started, people were putting items in their shopping carts, and that was all fine and good. Um, but you know, this doesn't really work anymore for today. What really works today is something that looks a lot different from the equipment standpoint. So instead of having this big hulking computer that you once had, you actually have something in your pocket uh, that looks a little bit like this, right? What is this? This is a cell phone. Most of us have this and we're doing a lot of shopping on this. It actually causes some interesting problems for us though. So we're thinking about this, what's different between the computer we had before and this, this phone here? The difference is mobility. With mobility, this can be anywhere. As we're walking down the street, we can be shopping. When you had that old computer, you couldn't do that because it was heavy, right? So let's think about this from a perspective of mobility. I'm gonna draw a picture, uh, a drawing of the United States of America. So let's say that we have this. This is the United States and uh, you are using your mobile phone and you could be here or you can be here or you can be in the middle, right? In the middle is where things get interesting. So if you're thinking about this, you wanna make sure you have low latency, right? Your phone is really critical for doing that. And when you have that, you wanna make sure that you have a data source and servers that are nearby. So let's draw that out. So let's say we have a data source up here, looks a little bit like this, and we have a data source down here. Now it's clear when you are here or you are here where you're gonna connect for local latencies. You'll connect to your nearest server, right? This is probably not gonna change as you move around down here, but what about in this middle point? What are you doing, right? So in this case, you wanna ensure that you have local latency. So you're gonna be routed depending on where you are. If you were here or here, it may be very different. Maybe you're routed to the southern one, maybe you're routed to the northern one. So how do we manage this? So let's imagine we have our shopping cart, right? And we're on a mobile phone in this area. So we have, we're up here and we're shopping here. We have hat and we have mitts and we have scarf. And you know what? You might think, well, what do you do here? You just replicate it down to the other one. So you'd have hat, mitt, and scarf down here. So this is fine until things start happening where you're going back and forth between different servers. In this case, you run into a problem. You run into a problem where these things get very different. So you're up here handling on this server, and let's say you remove the mitts from it, and then you have down here, you're, you're down here, and you add something like socks. Okay, so now you have two different versions of the shopping cart and they're very different. This is the problem because there's no way to reason about how these might be different without having to replicate. And when you start replicating directly, then you're gonna have the overhead of having that, you're losing that geolocal latency. So how do we solve this? Now you probably have guessed, Redis can help you with this. There's a feature in Redis, it's based on this concept of CRDTs, conflict-free replicated data types, CRDTs. What this allows you to do is think about data in a different way. So instead of having data here that is thinking about each one of these as being a unified cart, we're thinking about these items individually. So when we remove mitts here, we are actually recording that action of removal rather than recording the new state of the cart. When we add socks down here, we're adding it in and we're recording the add rather than actually recording the state of the cart. So what this allows us to do with CRDT is using that kind of methodology, we can create an active, active cluster. So active, active. An active, active cluster means that you can write to either one of these and the changes will be uh, automatically reflected. And when there's a synchronization that occurs between these two, which happens periodically, you're not overwriting the entire thing. It enables you to do this automatically at the database level. Redis Enterprise provides this uh, as a feature where you have two replicated clusters that allow you to do this without having to write any software that changes anything. So in this case, you're now safe and you can have more than two, you can have four or five. And you imagine putting these across the nation or across the globe and they automatically synchronize. So you're always getting geolocal latencies without having to change your application and you're able to maintain that great user experience that you want for your e-commerce site.